Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to, or welcome back to, the Senate Judiciary Committee. Uh, I appreciate seeing so many people here on our very first day, including um, our quorum, who is now present, of members. I see that people are still signing in, so um, I will give you all a minute to complete that. Um, I appreciate that we have had different systems over the years, and we are now back to a physical sign-in system, so if you can um, just let us know that you're here by signing in. We appreciate it. Of course, we also welcome those of you who are joining us virtually, either um, watching on YouTube or uh, via the Nellis website, and anybody who might be either calling in to testify or give public comment or joining us via video um, at, at a later date. We don't have any video presentations today. Um, and so with that, um, I would like to go ahead and start by having our esteemed secretary call the roll. Senator Harris, Senator Orenshaw, Here. Senator Dondero Loop, Here. Senator Wen, Senator Hansen, Here. Senator Krasner, Here. Senator Stone, Here. Chair Scheibel. Here. Thank you so much. Please mark Senator Harris, uh, Vice Chair Harris, absent but excused. Uh, she was not able to join us today, but she will be back with us on uh, Thursday, which is when our next meeting is, and for the rest of session. Um, to begin, I would like to give every member of the committee a few minutes to introduce themselves. Um, and so what I'm going to ask is that we start um, down at the, to my right, um, with Senator Don Darrow Loop. And if you would each just tell us um, your name, how long you've been serving, what district you represent, and um, anything else you, you want our partners in the audience to know. No. Thank you, Chair, and uh, welcome. Thank you for calling on me. Uh, Marilyn Dondero Loop, I uh, represent Senate District 8 in the far west part of Las Vegas, which is Summerlin and uh, the Lakes and Spring Valley as a crow flies. Um, I have served, this will be my sixth session with a little hiatus in between before coming to the Senate, uh, three sessions in the Assembly, and now this will be my third session in the Senate. Um, have done, I don't know, maybe nine or ten special sessions, I don't know the count there. Um, I am a retired teacher, uh, spent 30 years as an educator in Clark County, Nevada, loved every minute of it. And um, I am a born and raised Nevadan, raised in Las Vegas. My parents lived in Carson City with the first two and had the last three of us down in Las Vegas, but lived in little history, lived in the bungalows behind the governor's mansion when he worked for the State Department of Education. So um, come from a long line of Nevadans and I'm proud to be here. So thank you very much, Chair. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rochelle Wynn, and I proudly represent our Senate District. Sorry, I almost messed that up again. Senate District 3, and it is in central Las Vegas. Uh, this is my third session, um, but based on how white my hair has become over the last four and a half years, it would seem like it would be longer. But um, I did have the privilege in the Assembly of serving as the Vice Chair of the Judiciary Committee over there, and I look forward to being on this side. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, Chair. James Orenshaw represents State Senate District 21 down in Clark County. And uh, prior to that, I served in the Assembly, representing Assembly District 12. And I was you know, honored to serve on the Assembly Judiciary Committee every session I served. And over on the Senate side, I've been able to serve on the Senate Judiciary Committee. Uh, it's been great working with you. You've uh, helped be our captain of our ship, navigating rough waters. And I think a lot of people don't realize how the topics that come before your committee really touch people's lives in many different ways, whether it's uh, our, you know, our casino industry or uh, criminal law, civil law, so many important issues that affect our constituents come before your committee. So I look forward to working with you here and uh, trying to craft good policy. Hi, thanks, Chair, for this opportunity. I'm Ira Hansen. I represent uh, Senate District 14. Uh, it is six counties, Washoe, Humboldt, Pershing, Lander, 
a section of Eureka and a section of Elko County. It's about 34,000 square miles. It extends from the California border on the west to the Idaho-Oregon border on the north and all the way up, including the Oahe Indian Reservation. Uh, this is my seventh term uh, in the legislature. I've served on the Judiciary Committee all seven terms. I had the privilege of tw in 2015 of being the chairman of the Assembly Judiciary Committee. Uh, the highlight of my legislative time, the only time we were in the majority, so my only chairmanship. Uh, I'm very proud that we heard over 235 bills and everybody that brought a bill to that committee, regardless of party, or minority or majority status had a hearing on those bills and if they requested it we brought them to a vote of the committee as well so I take great pride in being completely bipartisan during that window of time I thoroughly enjoy the Judiciary Committee my background is I am a plumbing contractor my education is I graduated from high school Sparks High School no college so for me to sit here with all you highly trained and highly educated attorneys is also a great privilege and also a great learning curve for me as well so with that, I'm looking forward to serving again this time, and hopefully the bipartisan spirit will be able to be fully, uh, fully developed in this committee as well as the way we did it back in 2015. Thank you, Madam Chair. Hello, uh, I am Senator Lisa Krasner, and I proudly represent State Senate District 16. I wanted to say thank you to Chair Scheibel for this opportunity. Uh, I have been honored to serve as an assemblywoman for three regular sessions and three special sessions prior to being elected to the state senate. I served on the Judiciary Committee every single session. Uh, I enjoy the work. I enjoy creating legislation and supporting legislation that benefits people and improves people's lives. And I look forward to working with everyone on this committee uh, to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Jeff Stone. Uh, I represent the 20th Senatorial District, which uh, includes the communities of Laughlin, the city of Henderson, Boulder City, and all the way to Mesquite. So I go all the way to the Utah border, go all the way to the California border, and uh, the Arizona border. So it's a large geographical area. Um, I'm married to my wife, Regina. We have four kids together, seven grandkids. And um, I've been, I'm kind of a newbie here to Nevada. I've been living here full time for three years. And uh, we proudly call it our home now. And I look forward to working with all members of this committee as we move forward. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you so much, Senators. As you can see, we have a wonderful, diverse committee that um, is going to bring a lot to the table during our many discussions over the course of the next 119 days. Um, it's now my turn to get to introduce myself. I'm Melanie Scheibel. I'm the State Senator for District 9. I represent the southwest part of Las Vegas. And this is my second session chairing the Judiciary Committee in the Senate. Uh, this is my third session at the Legislature. And I've also chaired um, the Interim Committee and served on various Interim Committees as well as served in uh, several special sessions. So I'm very excited to be back here with you all. Um, we do have a very packed schedule. Um, it might not be obvious from the looks of this week as we begin to get all of our bills and BDRs in, but those of you who've been with us before know that Judiciary is an incredibly busy committee. So this is one of the few days that we can be a little bit more relaxed and take a little bit of time to um, you know, introduce ourselves to you, and I want to do that and let you guys know. Um, and when I I say you guys, I mean all of you um, in the audience who are here today and those watching uh, virtually or, or who might come by later. And so um, what I want you to know is that I'm very proud to represent Senate District 9 and to serve on the Judiciary Committee. I'm very excited to be here with all of you, and I'm very honored that um, my party, my caucus, and my this body, this, the Senate has put their trust in me to, to lead the Nevada Senate Judiciary Committee again. And we have a lot of work to do. So um, you'll, you'll hear me uh, start my committee at exactly 1 p.m. almost every single day. And so that is because we have so much to get through. But I also want everybody to understand that um, all of the hardworking senators on this committee do have other obligations. And I know that they are working very hard in and out of this building to ensure that we are making good policy choices. And sometimes it is simply impossible for everybody to be here at 1 p.m. Um, however, I will always be here at 1 and I will get started so that as a group we don't fall behind, but individual members 
members may have to come and go uh, throughout the, the judiciary meeting. And we understand that some of them may be running late and um, ask, uh, you know, this is my ask to all of you that if you are running late, it's c completely fine to ask somebody a, a question to catch up, to learn a little bit more. But if you miss an entire presentation, we ask that you follow up offline so we're not repeating um, entire presentations with the whole group. Um, I also encourage you, if you are testifying, if you are uh, presenting legislation or a bill, uh, to provide written comments as well. Personally, I read every single written comment that we receive, and I ask that members of this committee do the same because, again, sim sometimes we simply run out of time for um, everybody to be able to speak. Um, we will have a public comment period at the end of every meeting. Public comments um, cannot be related to any particular bill or issue that we've heard that day, and they are limited to two minutes. Um, over the course of the session, I will also be setting um, time constraints on testimony in support and opposition to different bills. That will generally be a two-minute time limit uh, with some flexibility for different circumstances. And if you have questions about that or want to discuss it, my door is always open. I'm always happy to talk about it. Um, it's, you know, and it will always be fair to both sides. Whatever um, time limit is instituted for one side will be instituted for both sides. Um, I also try to make an effort to accommodate people who are testifying and who, like the hardworking senators up here, also have other obligations. So we may take our agenda items out of order sometimes. An agenda item may be moved to another day. Um, you know, we don't do that without talking to the sponsor of the bill or the, the presenters. That's you know a, a decision that we make um, when it is in everybody's best interest to make an adjustment to that schedule. And so we appreciate um, everybody you know working together to make that as seamless as possible. Um, my staff is the best in the building and they always update our agendas as promptly as humanly possible but sometimes that is simply not as fast as I can type a tweet so uh, you may see that me tweeting out when a committee is running late due to a long floor session or an agenda item has to be moved or something like that and so um, please you know be, be cognizant of that as well uh, which brings me to my next little bit of housekeeping um, on the the meeting format side, which is that you see we all have our computers up here. Most of us have cell phones as well. I see many of you who are with us today brought your electronics, and that is absolutely fine. Uh, we ask that they not um, beep or play music or ring or buzz in the middle of the meeting and we also ask that you understand that the senators up here on the dais do use our phones and laptops to um, take notes exchange messages uh, that are relevant to our work um, nobody is up here scrolling through instagram and if they are i would ask them to please kindly stop that and um, so I, I appreciate everybody's understanding that we are utilizing technology for those purposes um, I also want to um, talk a little bit about the, the terminology that we use in the Senate Judiciary Committee. We strive to create an environment that is um, accepting, that promotes equality, that is respectful, where everybody is treated with dignity. Um, I've had the pleasure and the honor of working with um, almost every single person on this dais, and they have always treated me with the utmost respect, as well as the people who come to testify in front of us. And so we ask uh, the same of those people who are at the at the desk um, speaking to members of the committee on the dais. Um, and to that end, uh, I encourage all of you to join me in trying to use more gender neutral language. Um, you won't hear me referring to, well, you probably will, but um, I'm working on not referring to my colleagues as, you know, Madam President or, or Madam Chair. You can simply call me Chair Scheibel. When people are down at the front, I, I'll try not to call you sir or ma'am unless I know that um, you utilize those honorifics. And I might just say, you know, the person sitting in front of me, would you please turn your mic on or something like that. Um, and I encourage you all to, to join me in making that effort to ensure that this is a welcoming and safe environment for anybody and everybody who um, is going to participate in the process and so that we can get more people to participate in what is a very important process. And um, that brings me to, to the last thing that I want to share with 
all of you, um, is that we have had incredibly robust discussions on the Judiciary Committee over the years. And I cherish those discussions, and I love seeing our members be so um, involved in their legislation, be so educated, be so informed about the issues that we're working on. And I know that none of us ever want the robustness of that discussion to come at the expense of our deep respect for this process and for the people who participate in it. So. Uh, as my colleague mentioned, um, we do. We cover a very wide range of issues in the Senate Judiciary Committee. We get to talk about all of the criminal law statutes in the state of Nevada. We get to talk about policing and law enforcement. We get to work on issues regarding gaming and gaming regulations. We talk about cannabis and the regulation of the cannabis industry. We talk about the interactions between those different topics. And then we have entirely separate topics that come before us on a regular basis, including the juvenile justice system, the makeups of the courts, the um, the makeup of the judiciary. And um, having all of those discussions means that we have a lot of different people who come to the table, who provide their stories, who provide their testimony, and uh, the members of this committee bring their own experiences to bear. Um, at times, uh, we, we definitely have uh, differences of opinions and differences of views, and that is always welcome in the Senate Judiciary Committee. Sometimes um, we I, I may try to bring the conversation back uh, a little bit more narrowly pointed on the bills at hand in order to keep us on task and in order to ensure that we can complete all of the business we have to complete in 120 days. I'll also be limiting questions from members of the committee um, that are to those that are relevant and those that the person who um, is being asked the question can actually answer. Um, I know that sometimes it can be frustrating when we want more information and it is simply not available to be had. And you know, you have my commitment that I will work with our partners um, who are here with us today, with sponsors of bills, uh, with people who oppose bills, with anybody who's involved in this process to get those answers. But what we won't do is um, uh, harass witnesses on the stand who, who don't have that information. Um, and not that that has ever happened, but I want you all to know um, when you come up here that you don't have to worry about that happening because I have um, an incredibly respectful and uh, accomplished and experienced committee um, who, who take this process as seriously as I do and who are as excited as I am to hear from all of you. Um, I think that completes most of um, my remarks and I would like to introduce to you the best staff in the building, uh, the Senate Judiciary Committee staff. I think we have most of you in the room. Um, so to my left is uh, Patrick Guinan. He is our committee policy analyst. And I don't know if you want to say, he, he does not want to say anything. <laughs> that is, he's, he's a smart man. Um, actually, he's going to go over our committee brief with us in a few minutes, so I'll let you do that. But um, before we do that, I want to introduce the rest of our staff. Um, we have two members of the Legal Counsel Bureau with us um, this session, which is going to be fantastic. We have Carly O'Krent, um, who is up on the dais with me, as well as Kelsey Delosier. Did I? Okay. Who is um, currently at the table down in the front, but maybe in other places at other times. Um, we have our amazing committee manager returning to us from last session, Beth Rikers, who is um, back there. We also have um, an assistant committee manager or a committee assistant named Leslie Sexton who is over here. And we have um, three amazing secretaries, Jan Braze, who is in here, uh, Pat Devereaux, um, Blaine Jensen, and we have a super amazing secretary, Sally Ram, um, because there are four of them, and I thought there were only three. We have four super amazing secretaries. Um, and um, I think before I turn it over to you, Mr. Guinan, um, I do have a couple more housekeeping measures. I didn't know it was possible to keep more house, and maybe that's why my office is so messy. Um, but I am supposed to let you all know that the committee materials can be accessed online. And for members who might not know this, we are a paperless committee, which means that I will not be printing out copious copies of um, bills or agendas or exhibits. If you 
do um, require those. Um, the, the exhibits are always released at 10 a.m. on the day of the meeting, and we ask that you have your legislative assistant prepare those for you the way that you would like them prepared. And if you need any help, you can let us know. Um, the same goes for those of you who are joining us to, te to testify. We will have a few copies of everything available in the committee room, but not as many as you may see in other committees or as you may have seen in the past. Of course, if it's a problem, let us know. We are happy to adjust, but um, we are just trying not to, uh, to waste um, paper or um, single-use plastic bottles. So I understand that the water fountains do not yet dispense Diet Coke, and so you may be bringing in your bottles of Diet Coke and other beverages, but if you're drinking water, you know, use that reusable um, water bottle and, and don't bring in single-use plastic water bottles uh, to this committee. Um, if you would like to receive electronic notification of the agendas, the minutes, the final reports, things like that, you can sign up to join what is essentially our mailing list that is on the Nevada Legislature's website. And again, if you have trouble accessing it, you can send um, an email to the committee. Our committee email address is like senjud, S-E-N-J-U-D, at sen.state.nv. Dot us, um, or you can call us, and I'll put the number on the record just once, 775-684-6523. Um, that's also how you can submit additional public comments or send us questions, concerns, um, communicate with the committee, things like that. Um, and I think I have finally reached the end of my, my housekeeping matters. Um, and you may also hear me repeat some of these, especially in the first week or two, as we have people coming to testify for the first time and joining us for uh, the first time. But then as we get further into the session, hopefully uh, we will be able to dispense with these uh, formalities and technicalities and dive into the important work that we have to do on the Judiciary Committee. So um, with that, are there any questions or comments? That was me. <laughs> okay, I don't see any, so we're gonna move on to the first item on our agenda, which is the adoption of the committee rules. Um, these, have, these are available on our website. Um, and you were all emailed a copy of them. Are there any questions, any discussions on the rules? All right, I would accept a motion. I'd so move. All right, that is a motion from Second. Senator Wynn to adopt the committee rules as laid out in the handout, and that is a second from Senator Orenshaw. Um, all those in favor, indicate by saying aye. aye. Any opposed, nay. I think that passed unanimously. Okay, I th that one passes unanimously. We've adopted committee rules. And um, that brings us to the next item on our agenda, which is uh, the presentation of the committee brief. Uh, and I will turn it over to Mr. Guinan. Thanks, Chair Scheibel, uh, for your kind <clears throat> introduction earlier, as well as uh, having me do this. My name is Patrick Guinan. I'm with the LCB Research Division, and I will be serving as the committee policy analyst for the Senate Judiciary Committee. Um, Senator Hansen just reminded me a few minutes ago that this will be my fifth time serving um, as a policy analyst for Senate Judiciary, so um, hopefully we'll get it right this time. Um, I'm just going to go through the committee brief very briefly. I'm not going to read it to everybody. This is also available online. Everyone can look at it, and each of the committees will be providing these to the members, so they're very familiar with them uh, by and large. So just a couple of high points. First of all, as um, Council Bureau staff, we are nonpartisan and we do not advocate or take a position on any measure or other issue that comes before the committee. So I just want to put that on the record. Um, secondly, as staff to the committee, we are here to provide research and analysis to all the committee members as well as, as the chair and, in fact, um, every member of the Senate. So if you have questions or need any assistance from myself or other members of the research staff or policy analysts, please reach out to us. That's what we're here for. Um, Moving forward, I will just point out a few things that are in the brief about the Judiciary Committee. We are, as the chair mentioned, the busiest policy committee um, in the Senate, and that looks like 
usually we run somewhere between about 150 up to about 190 bills a session. I don't know that we've ever um, been able to beat Senator Hansen's record from the assembly, but we'll try. Um, we have in this uh, brief listed for you uh, all the committee membership, the committee staff. If you need to reach out to any staff, that's available to you. Um, we also listed for you the uh, jurisdiction of the committee, which is set forth in this in uh, Senate Joint Resolution 1 in our rules. This is just um, reiterating that jurisdiction, uh, but you can see that there's a little bit of a list of things that we typically see. A uh, little bit of a summary from 2021. This committee was referred 143 bills. We processed 102 of those out of the committee, and 94 of those were reported to the governor. Um, there's a list of anticipated topics for the 2023 session here. You can look at our bill draft request list online to get a sense of what might be coming. There's also a list of topics here that we typically cover. I think the chair did a better job of describing what this committee typically covers than I would do right now anyway, so I'll just uh, leave that alone. And then next on page four, there's a list of relevant sources and publications that you might be interested in. Um, this will help you just with background information. And if you see anything in this list that you'd like further information um, on, just uh, contact me or other committee staff and we can help you get whatever you need. I would just note that um, in the 2021 session, Assembly Bill 443 revised the, the formation of our committee structure for the interim. And so we now have the joint interim um, committee on judiciary and that committee uh, produced 15 bill draft requests from the interim 10 of those related to judiciary topics generally five of them related to juvenile justice so if you're looking for those bills the BDRs are listed here and I would just let you all know that uh, they will be split between the houses um, fairly equally a couple of them may not come to the judiciary committees depending on what the topic areas are but that's just a reference for you uh, then following um, that, just a, a few more publications um, that are listed under publications here. They are hyperlinked in the electronic documents, so any of the stuff that you see in here that you might want to take a look at, if you go online and look at it electronically, you can get everything very easily there. Then we summarize the court structure in Nevada. And finally, I would just note that under convictions and punishments, we have um, a really brief listing of felonies, gross misdemeanors, and misdemeanors. And um, our division, the research division, publishes lists of all the felonies in Nevada, and we recently completed a compilation of all the misdemeanors and gross misdemeanors in Nevada. We hope that it's all of them. We think it is. Um, we're open to receiving commentary and uh, notations on those, but they're available online as well, and it's folks who are interested in the Judiciary Committee, those lists might be really useful to you. I have a feeling we're going to be talking about um, convictions and punishments and, and uh, penalties some this session. Uh, and then finally, the last thing I would note is just that this is probably the most useful part of the uh, committee brief for you, which is a list of contacts, which will be helpful to you and your legislative assistance if you're trying to reach out to agencies or other entities and you need to know who to get a hold of. Um, but if there's a contact that's not on that list that you need, please let me know and we'll um, make sure that we get you in touch with whoever you need to be in touch with. And that's all I have, Chair Scheibel. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, any comments or questions on the committee brief from the members? All right then. Um, thank you very much again for that um, overview and it is indeed an incredibly helpful document. So I encourage you all to bookmark it. And um, that concludes um, that item of business. And I think that brings us to number three, which is potential BDR introductions. Um, you will see this on our agenda for the next couple of weeks. Um, the committee itself does introduce its own bills and um, we do not have any today to introduce, but we will have them soon, I am sure. So we can skip that agenda item for now and move on to the last item on our agenda, which is public comment. Um, we have public comment from three different sources at every meeting. Those are the in-person public comments in Carson City, the in-person public comments in Las Vegas, and I'm motioning up because you can see it on the screen that's in front of me and behind all of you, um, the Grant Sawyer building where people can come to make public comments or testify in person. And then we also accept uh, public comments and testimony over the phone. So is there anybody wishing to give public comment in person today in Carson City? All right. I don't see anybody coming up to the table. So um, I would normally go to Las Vegas, but I don't see anybody in Las Vegas. So I will go straight to the phones. Do we have anybody on the phone line wishing to give public comments? 
Thank you, Chair Scheibel. The public line is open and working. However, there are no callers wishing to offer public comment at this time. All right. In that case, I will now close public comment. And that concludes our meeting for today. Uh, we will not be meeting tomorrow, but we will be back here uh, same time, same place on Thursday. We are adjourned.